Hello and welcome to another tremendous edition of your motivational and life transforming program, Rising Prime. The program that educates, that enlightens, and counsels you on how to make it in life on your channel of choice, African Independent Television, AIT. Today's edition promises to be great because we shall be discussing the standards of education in Nigeria. And I've got two educationists in the studio here with me to discuss on trending issues in our educational sector. But before I introduce you to my guests, as usual, you know I will do it. We shall be going on a very short break now. Please stay with us. We shall be right back. I am rising prime. No matter what may come my way, I will not give up on life I will not anymore. give up. I will not give up. I am rising prime. Welcome back, and if you're just tuning in to your favorite independent television, you're watching Rising Prime. Before I went on break the other time, I was about to introduce you to my guest. My first guest is engineer O.J. Adetoyi. He is a senior lecturer in Kaduna Polytechnic in the Department of Civil Engineering. You're welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Yes. And accompanying him in the studio is Mrs. Ojo Taikemi. She is an author a teacher of English language, and she is the principal of Haig International School. You're welcome to the program. Thank you. All right, education, they say, is the act or process of imparting or acquiring general knowledge, developing the power of reasoning and judgment. Generally, it is preparing oneself intellectually for mature and better life. In other words, it is the medium for transmission of knowledge and worthwhile values from one person or group of people to another, and it transcends generation. Looking at this definition, let me start with you, sir, engineer OJ Aditoyi. Are we, do we really meet up the standards of education in Nigeria? Do we really meet up the standards of the world? Thank you very much. Firstly, I would like to define the word standard. Standard is a specified, agreed expectation of a society. It's a reference point which other things are being referred to, comparatively speaking. So before we can actually say whether the standard here is falling or, or is measuring up to our expectation, I want to believe that the society expects some things from the school products. And the moment the school products are actually falling short of what the society expects from them, they want to classify our educational system as really falling below standards. Stand. If you look at it very well, the type of uh, knowledge imparted on them now has improved. The curriculum, the modules, the, the in-depth areas they cover compared to yesteryears is even higher. But the problem is there are distractions here and there that's making these children not to really concentrate and get the best out of this system. That's why when they leave school, they don't measure up to expectation. So, looking at it this way, we want to say that the standard is okay, but the learners are not committed to make the best use of the standards. Do you have anything to say about the standards of education in Nigeria if we are actually meeting up the standards? Well. Like he said, rightly like said, the standard is high. It's okay. But there are some factors that is depriving or obstructing the, the full flow or exhibition of the outcome. So the outcome expectations are high. What we expect to get from it is what we are talking about. The standard laid down is good. The curriculum is being improved year in, year out. But what are we getting at the end of the day is what we are talking about. Those, those factors you made mention, can you mention some of the factors that yes. is affecting our educational system? The least um, of it will be the learners. The factors surrounding the learners now we can talk start from the top, which is the government. We go further to the examination councils, the private school, and largely, most
most responsible, the parents of the learners. All right, talking about examination of councils, you see students with high grades, sir. Passed the work with A's, B, C's, they write jam, they make good grades, but they are not admitted still into the university. What would you have to say about this, sir? Look, looking at it from your own sector, being a senior lecturer in Cat Polytechnic. Actually, the institutions in this country, all of them, they have their carrying capacities because of the infrastructures on ground. So some of these things might not be able to capture large number of students. So, in order to get the best out of the knowledge that's supposed to be imparted on them, their starting ratio of learners to the facilities, of learners to the teachers. So they cannot just overstretch the facilities. So, since the facilities we have are not adequate enough to actually accommodate bigger number or larger number, definitely they are constrained to take the numbers that the facilities can actually accommodate. That is why the system cannot really take everyone that writes exams or apply for a course. Can we now say this is the reason why parents fly their children abroad to study? The aspect of parents flying their children abroad, because it's most common with the rich, the wealthy people. They feel the standard is low, in my, in my own opinion. They think the standard here is low. They feel out there, they get something better, and then they tend to take their children out of the country. I don't think it's because maybe they don't get the admission and all that. I feel it's because they think the standard of education in Nigeria is low. And they feel it's better out there and we want the best for my child. I want the best for my child, so I spend more for the child. I take the child out of the country where he can get better education. There's this issue going on presently in Nigeria, sir. And I know you would have heard about it seen something like that happening. You will observe that graduates of polytechnics and graduates of university, though they study the same course, civil engineering or any other course, but when it comes to employment, you see organizations employing graduates from um, universities. In some cases, you will find that like engineering in your own sector to be more precise you will find out that the polytechnic graduates are the ones doing the job more than the university graduate. What would you have to say about this, sir? You see, in the domain of learning, the polytechnic, they are supposed to be psychomotive in their studies. They impart skill, they develop skill majorly. They edit. Establishing polytechnics is really meant to produce middle level manpower. Why the universities are supposed to produce higher level manpower? You see, the focus of these two educational systems are not the same. You see, we tend to model up things together. We should try to let the world know that polytechnic is polytechnic, university is university. The focus of these institutions or these levels of learning are never the same. You see, like engineering, the, the university system, they, 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 they subject the learners into more of the theoretical. The no why the theories the fundamentals, the basic knowledge, why things are working the way they are working. But in the polytechnic, the polytechnic focus more on the know-how, the techniques of doing things. So which is better? You see, the two are quite important into the system. The other thing is, we tend to make one superior to the other. It shouldn't be the society needs everybody. Like engineering, there are level of uh, manpower. The engineer is there, the technology is there, the technician is there, the artisan is there, 
the craftsmen are there, even the laborers are there. Everybody has his own bit to contribute to make the bigger hole. So this idea of somebody looking down on somebody should not even come up at all. Everybody has his own role to play to build the nation. It's just the mentality, it's the belief that it has been put on in people that makes them to feel that one is inferior, one is superior. The only thing I just want to say here is that they should allow everybody to hit his in it. It's, it's, it's terribly bad that somebody that goes to polytechnic will get to a point and he won't go to go up again. And somebody that will go to university will go and go and go and go and go. So it's making students in the polytechnic to get discouraged. That's why there is mass people rushing to university at the expense of going to the polytechnic. And you see, they, they, they go to the universities and they are not even picked. Mostly, I have a friend that that wrote to the University of Ife almost five times. He didn't get it. Just of recent, he was picked at UI, University of Ibadan. That's after five years. Now, let's, let's look at this from another perspective. Looking at humans, generally, we are tend to give up easily, except for individuals. Talking about these students that I said he has written work for like five different times and jam. What if he has given up? Writing, rewriting, writing, rewriting. It tends to make the individual give up. Is what should government do to tackle this situation? Because that, that's why we have thoughts everywhere. Not that these guys are not good, not that they don't have something. If, in fact, if you, if you go around the street today and you get to talk with some of these guys that do bus conductors and the rest of them, when you listen to them speaking, you will be amazed yourself. In fact, some of them are graduates. What can government do to tackle this situation of writing and rewriting again? Why are you busy writing and trying? Because I wouldn't encourage anyone to give up at any stage. You keep trying and trying, just like the proverbial, proverbial uh, spider that keeps falling and keeps climbing again. You don't give up, but why are you waiting? Like you said, a bus conductor, at least he's keeping himself busy. They say an idle mind is a devil's workshop. You don't wait for the government to do. Don't wait for government to do for you. You look for what you even will do for the government. And that is why empowering yourself with all these uh, artisans and uh, activity is very important. Involving uh, self trade and business and anything that can come up. You don't just depend on government or depend on... Some people even go through the higher institution, but they don't even use the certificate to get the job that they require. They go into business. It is, sometimes these things are inbuilt. It's in the blood. You just go deep into yourself and find what you can come up with, and then you find yourself a shining star. Okay. Recently, I was, I was in a discussion with a friend, and he said education is not even good. He said he doesn't want to go to school, that what he's doing is good for him. He's a fashion designer. And sincerely, if you see him, he's living good. And he said, if Dan Gote did not go to school and he made it, he said, why should I go to school? Apparently, I discovered that he has written jam over and over again. What would you have to say about this fellow, sir? Actually, I just want to say that the system should not frustrate anybody. Every citizen is entitled to education, entitled to knowledge. So the government has to go a little bit further to make sure that virtually everybody access education. When the fellow you referred to, it, it was frustration that made him to make such statement. Assuming he tried it once, the first attempt and he got it, he wouldn't have said such a thing. And even the trade is doing, he wouldn't have even found himself doing the trade. But because he tried this severally and was not getting what he intended having, so he was forced to look elsewhere. So getting elsewhere and uh, he's able to make small coins, we feel that is uh, adequate for him. But in actual sense, if you don't have the education structurally, you are not complete. Yes. Something is still missing in you. It's a thing that government should, suit to, should see to it that at least everybody can assess to make us a better nation. We shall be going on a very short break now. Please don't touch the dial and we shall be right back. I am
sunrise and cry No matter what may come my way I will not give up on life I will not anymore. give up I will not give up I am rising and Can I smell that number one? Hey, Jay. Hey, Jay, get me, Jay. I love you. Why are you working there? Why are you working there? Oh, yeah, Baba. Hello. Okay, now. Just hold on. So. And be strong. It won't be long. It will be all When I woke up this morning, looking at myself, it'd be like, say, I'm shining. See the blessings. Multiplying just like the birds in the sky, I'm flying. So divining, we inclining. Take it from me, I see good things are piling. It be okay, coming one day. Make we stay cool, stay cool and keep smiling. Hey. No retreat, no surrender. Don't you give up, don't fight, you're a winner. somebody tell you you can't do something not even me all right you got a dream you got to protect it people can't do something themselves they want to tell you you can't do it you want something go get it Period. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. What you doing here? Don't you have practice? Not anymore. I quit. Oh. Well, since when are you the quitting kind? 
I don't know. I just don't see the point anymore. So you didn't make the dress list. There are greater tragedies in the world. I wanted to run out of that tunnel for my dad to prove to everyone prove that I worked. Prove what? That I was somebody. Oh, you are so full of crap. You're five feet enough, a hundred enough, and you got hardly a speck of athletic ability. And you hung in with the best college football team in the land for two years. And you're also going to walk out of here with a degree from the University of Notre Dame. In this lifetime, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody except yourself. And after what you've gone through, if you haven't done that by now, it ain't going to never happen. Now go on back. I'm sorry I never got you to see your first game in here. Hell, I've seen too many games in this stadium. I thought you said you never saw a I've game. I've never seen a game from the stands. You were a player? I rode the bench for two years. Thought I wasn't being played because of my color. I got filled up with a lot of attitude. So I quit. Still not a week goes by, I don't regret it. And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life. You won't regret walking out, letting them get the best of you. You hear me clear enough? You gonna give me your best? I'm gonna give you my best. All right, one more thing. I want you to do it blindfolded. Why? Because I don't want you giving up at a certain point when you can go further. Get down. Jeremy, get on his back. <laughs> get a good tight hold, Jeremy. All right. Let's go, Brock. Keep your knees off the ground. Just your hands and feet. There you go. A little bit left. A little bit left. There you go. You get the 20. You give me your best. You keep going. That's it. No, don't stop, Brock. You got more in you than that. Hey, done. Just rest in a second. You got to keep moving. Let's keep moving. Let's go. Don't quit till you got nothing left. There you go. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Your very best. Your very best. Your very best. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. Don't quit on me. Keep going. Keep driving it. Keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. That's it. Your very best. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. That's it. You keep driving. Keep your knees off the ground. Keep driving it. Don't quit till you got nothing left. Keep moving, Brock. That's it. That's it. That's it. Keep going. I want everything you got. Come on, keep going. It hurts. Don't quit on me. Your very best. Keep driving. Keep driving. There you go. There you go. He's heavy. I know I'm heavy. If I had strength! Then you negotiate with your body to find more strength, but don't you give up on me, Brock. You keep going, you hear me? You keep going, you're doing good, you keep going. Do not quit on me. You keep going. It hurts! I know it hurts, you keep going. You keep going. It's all hard from here. 30 more steps. You keep going, Brock. Come on! Keep going! It hurts! And let it burn! It hurts and burn it! It's all hard! You keep going, Brock. Come on! Come on! Keep going! You promised me your best! Your best! Don't stop! Keep going! Too hard! It's not too hard! You keep going! Come on, Brock! Give me more! Give me more! Keep going! Twenty more steps! Twenty more! Keep going, Brock! Give me your best! Don't quit! No! Keep going! Keep going! Keep going! Don't quit! Don't quit! Don't quit! Brock Kelly, you don't quit! Keep going! Keep going! No, Brock Kelly! You don't quit on me! No! You keep going! You keep going! Go, no, Brock! Ten more steps! Ten more! Ten more! Ten more! Keep going! Don't quit! Give me your heart! You can! You can! Five more! Five more! Come on, Brock! Come on! Don't quit! Don't quit! Come on, Brock! Two more! One more! Oh, you hurt! You hurt! Keep going! People say you, you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing, and it's totally true. And the reason is, uh, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. 
It's really hard. And you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. And this is where we draw the curtain for this edition. If you are just tuning into your favorite independent television, you didn't miss out totally. You know how we do it. Just log on your Facebook, search for Rising Prime, like our page. There, you will get a link to watch it on YouTube. You will watch the full edition of what they have just said. My guest has been Engineer O.J. Adetoyi. He is a senior lecturer in Kaduna Polytechnic in the Department of Civil Engineering. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you. And the other person is Mrs. Ojo Taye Kemi. She is an author. She is a teacher of English language, and she is the principal of AIC International School. Thank you for your time, ma. You're welcome. So this is where we draw the cutting for today's edition, and I say, keep yearning, keep learning, and never stop learning. Bye-bye. may come my way I will not give up on life anymore I am rising prime from every ugly situation I will not give up on life anymore I fail, I will start all over All things are possible If I believe